I'm going to stop the ship. Okay. Bridge, Nav. I'll stop, please. It's just big enough, but also lumpy enough. But it's probably good for crusts as well as um, might be some. Can we get an iris crystal. adjustment on Argus, or is Argus out of the, or is Herc out of the picture there? Oh, there, perfect. Thank you. Sorry about that. Oh no, it's all good. Let's go ahead and poke it, and then we'll image it before we collect. I'm trying to expose for the ground in front of the yeah, ROV, but it's totally. just not, not it's possible. It's not ideal. Which one are we after? This this one here? Yeah, it kind of looks like it's... Yeah, that's it. Oh, nice. Yeah, good. Big one. Still a little slabby, but I think uh, we won't be too picky. Where do you want to store this? Uh, let's see how big it is first. Probably going to go in the starboard box somewhere. Still attached on one side. Oh my gosh. It's okay, you can break it. Uh, it's probably a good sign, actually. Dinner plate. Yeah. 30 centimeters across, maybe? 25. Yeah. Let's just go with that. It's a good start. Okay. That starboard? Should, that should fit nicely in the, yeah, one of the starboard outer bit. Let me know when you're ready for dive salvo. Or okay. sample salvo. You guys okay if I zoom in the sediment while we do this? Yeah, go for it. Data, what sample number do we have? This is sample number 51. 51, here we go. It's not really that big in context when you look yeah, at it. Yeah, I box, know. So. I really thought it would be bigger. Pretty big. Okay. That's yeah. ready for dive cell though? Uh, yep. We're gonna do okay. a corresponding Niskin above. Video, can you expose for Niskins? Oh that looks great actually. And I'll give you a Niskin cam. Thank you. There you
There you go. It's number six. Yep. I guess I could have started at one, but went for the oh, it's harder, good. harder one. It's good one. to get the hard one first. Yep. That's very nice. Back box and bottom sample. Yep. Okay. Here we go. Just want to catch up real quick. Sure. Yeah. Keep messing with the arm is fine. Sorry, that's totally in the way. That's it. It'll flop right out of the way, I think. Can you come up? Coming up. Right there. So I'm going to come right underneath you, it looks sure. like. Okay. Come up to about 20, then I'll come back down. That That's sounds good. Cost. Who needs USBL? We've got 10 zillion cameras. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, did you set this up by having me go through every camera? <laughs> uh, we have lots of sonar and lots of cameras. Yeah. <laughs> the redundancy is good. Yes. Because USB bail is like not useful right now. No. Whoa. All right. So I'm going to put the ship under move again. Yes, please. Thank you. Bridge, Nav. Can we do 100 meters bearing 220? Thank you. What have we here? Go for Zoom. Nothing? Oh, what is that? Maybe trash. I don't know. Oh, squat lobster or something. I think maybe dead squat lobster. Go wide. Let me take a look. Yeah, totally. Right oh, shrimp, shrimp shaped. That would be uh, that would be pretty rare. Usually, you know, What's that? Usually you don't find biological debris it tends to stick around True. very long. It's Interesting. It is. 
Okay, go for Zoom. All that trash. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Totally. Just plastic garbage. Yeah. Go wide. Bummer. Yeah, it's never fun to see. <laughs> Little outcroppy bits, but no, uh, no really substantial relief here. Yeah, and if you look in the sonars, everything looks pretty much like this for a while. Mm. Like some, some chunky rocks, but like no, nothing really dramatic. Yeah. I, I would bet even in these nodule fields, the sediment's probably not that thick either. It's that little Maybe white a thing couple there. inches. Steve, your we'll eyes are amazing. Yeah, okay. you're so quick. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's go for zoom. I'm so close to this monitor. I <laughs> know best, that, and that monitor, monitor is amazing. Is really a limpet? One of those. Yeah. Oh, it is a little limpet. Yeah, it's a limpet. It's got the pleura. Okay, go wide. It's alive. Is that something you want to assess? Yeah. Okay. And it looks like a dead shell to me, but it could be alive got time sometimes they have tentacles sticking out uh, or you know you can make out part of the foot but it's unusual to see them on soft sediment um, oh really yeah and they're, they're normally uh, eating stuff on rocky surfaces okay go for zoom I don't see any like of that like yeah. iridescent white flesh or anything. I'm wondering if, if that like that, that's a hole on top. Not oh, somebody ate it? Yeah, that's what oh. I'm thinking. It doesn't look very fresh, but you never know. I'm going to I'm gonna go error on the side and say probably not, not doing well <laughs> or it's okay. been eaten. Okay, go ahead video. A lot of the time sea stars Sometimes other gastropods. We're seeing we're seeing some more of these sponge stalks. I should note too. Remember we were seeing those like long shaped yeah. nodules. Oh yeah. That ended up being yeah. Oh, yeah. dead sponges. Yeah, dead sponge, sponge rubble sponge skeletons. It's a, uh, oh no, that's a rock, okay. This is a in more interesting alp crop. Yeah, this is, this would be like good rock sampling material too. You always see the best rocks after you have one in the Yeah, paper. totally. <laughs> Still not a lot of current, Can we throw Steve. That? Yeah. What's, what's that video? Uh, I was just kind of saying can we throw that other rock out <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah, if it wasn't for the niskin the last oh, yeah. you could switch them out if you want. true <laughs> a little harder to dig them out of the box <laughs> but not impossible 
especially with the flappy. Yeah, that one. Coral cutter. Well, it's it's just it's just plate shaped enough that you could probably just ditch it and put one of those in the hurt pl in the. <laughs> no, but then it doesn't go with the water. You need your matching water. It's too bad we can't open the niskins back up. <laughs> well, we can always take more than six rocks. We just can't take more than six water. If we had an That's arm that went all the way around on the other side. Could open the niskin? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, wait, the, mango, the ma mongo doesn't go over there? No, it's all the way uh, outward. It can't, it can't reach behind it. It's right behind it. Yeah. Interesting. So, but it could... Can it get to the same, as far back as uh, the regular manipulator? No. No, okay. It's so its its shoulder is operated by a ram, so like a linear actuator as opposed to a rotary actuator. So Kraft has a shoulder that is operated by something that can basically go in a full circle if you wanted it to. Wow. Um, even though, like, there are mechanical stops for that, I think. But uh, the Magnum is just a cylinder, or like a piston, right. and it has a certain range that it can get to. Can you uh, come up maybe a little? Oh, sorry. We yeah. put a soft stop in the uh, azimuth uh, for the craft so you don't oh, really? run it into the side of the vehicle when you're putting stuff in the... So it doesn't front. have a hard stop on it, it at does. all? It oh, does. It okay. does, but we, it's more than what we set it to. Oh, okay. Electric, like a soft stop. So you can set limitations for the joints? Yeah, you can calibrate all the joints to kind of what you want them to be, whether That's full cool. range or... It's, yeah. Gotcha. But the thing that operates the arm's shoulder is a lot closer to what operates its wrist. So it can go, like, like in theory, in full circles. So when you say shoulder, you mean azimuth? Right? Azimuth shoulder, yeah. yeah. Shoulder azimuth, yeah. And Magnum has one of those in its wrist as well, which allows it to go all the way around. Poor guy's just not as limber. I get it. I've got a bad left shoulder and a bad right <laughs> wrist. <laughs> That's exactly it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sponge. Yeah, you could say your shoulder azimuth, maybe. Like, if you yeah, got, like, a rotator that. cuff issue, that would be a shoulder azimuth issue. We can continue this move, but increase the step. So, uh, 150 meters, bearing 220. Ooh. Definitely well, moving into nice more. One. This is a Fun. treat. Bouldery. Yeah. Substrate. Seafloor. A very, yeah, it's a very bumpy sponge. It's so bumpy. Bridge, Nav. There's not a lot of current here for it to be doing its sponge thing. Can we actually decrease the speed to 0 0.2 knots? Can we rotate around it to look at the backside? Yeah, totally. What's your thinking on the speed change? Think, we, is he going normally, a lot, little faster than? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. I think this might be colophagus also. Is that something you can tell just by looking at the at the backside or like what are you gonna look at for the backside, yeah. Yeah. The osculum, is that correct? Yep. Is that the right sort of uh yeah, yep. That's a great view through there. Can we yeah, do a bit with lasers off? Yeah. Yes. It's kind of wild. We haven't seen really much life at all, and then to see this sponge so large here. Yeah, totally. Like, found the best spot. Once I get all the way around video, I'll have you zoom. If I can get a good, stable view inside. Give you a little bit more tether. 
Yeah. Oh, we're kind of low already, but it's. I mean, we've got. We're 13 meters off the deck. I suppose it's fine. Yeah, I got lots of altitude, but yeah. It's a small delta. Which is actually kind of a cool shot if I set this up on Argus too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Bridge, Nav. Hey, sorry if I was unclear. Um, that move was 150 meters, bearing 220 at 0.2 knots. Correct. Thank okay, you. go for Zoom. Anybody home? I thought I saw something on the other side. First came around. Oh, really? Other side. Sorry, I meant the like the whole front side. You don't need to go around to see it, but I think it was a pink. Okay. Crustacean. Bridge, Nav. Sorry, I think when you're putting those move-ins, they're additive, so they keep adding on top. If you do current position and then move, um, we'll have our step correct. So right now, it's set to 436 meters. Thank you, video. That's really good. Great. Okay. Come up. Thank you. Thanks. That is super neat to see. That Argus view is cool too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice to see something really charismatic. Yeah. That was yes, cool. it is. I needed that. We can get lasers whenever. Thanks for the reminder there. Man, we got this crazy like side secondary swell or something. That's yeah, I know that just keeps coming out of nowhere. like sets every like 15 minutes or something so we face it into the primary swell well according to the yeah according to the dp sort of Let's see where he's at here so science sonar would have us believe that it's going to be rocky much. like this for a while great yeah hopefully we'll find some critters that's yeah i think this is the good stuff for. Get my heading back on. What are we going? Two two zero. Yep. Yeah. There we go. Oh, awesome! That looks great. Thank you. I was struggling with my heading that whole zoom, and it's because I had auto heading on. Hmm. That would do it. Yeah, every time. Since the rock sample, I should start. To, I should start to identify that, that line yeah. on the bottom, or is that? A I don't. Stop? I don't know if you. you yeah, is maybe. That. Oh, uh, dead something. I bet. Yeah, when when I'm like just getting stuck. Uh, that, that would make sense. Once in a while, we're getting the secondary swell like coming broadside to the ship. Oh, and there's a little critter living on that rock there. Could oh, be a yeah. sponge stalk. Not sure about that. Could this be like an old bamboo coral skeleton? Nope. No? Just like a wee little sponge there. <laughs> yeah, it's so cute. Is it because that would get broken down? Okay, go a little wider. Yeah, it, would, see if it wouldn't. Get the... It would probably break down over time. Right. That looks like a rope to me. And also, it doesn't <laughs> I don't have any think nodes rope. on it. Right. Hope not. But I won't test fate here.
could be a very fine sponge dog, something like that. Josh is right. I don't need to tempt fate. Might be some, some of these things might be pillows, broken up pillows, but they look fairly well crusted over. But this, yeah, every single place there's scour, or there could be scour, there's nodules of various sizes. It's a little worm that we just passed. Yeah, I saw that. <sighs> so it's the late night sigh. It's okay. <laughs> you can sigh at three twenty in the morning. Yeah, just like yeah, that. Yeah, it was. I wasn't unhappy about anything. I yeah, just, just was, I was thinking about the USBL and how far we've come, and you know, <laughs> all that stuff. It's like a, a deep thoughts sigh. Yeah, breathing's important. Yeah, it is important. <laughs> I, I do like the color uh, scheme for the USBL, blue, blue and blue pink. and red. Red. Oh, uh, you're on the other screen. Uh, yeah, yeah, Roger. It's like on turquoise hot and hot pink. Mm -hmm, that is That's what it looks like to me. Very eighties. Yeah, it's fun. It's also really easy to read across any other color ramp, which I think is nice. I, I love having discussions about the pros and cons of different types of color color ramps. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I yep. think it's an important thing to discuss. If you're a map maker, I'm yeah. with you. Or are you scientists you in general, like how you display your information. So, are you looking at high pack or the uh, high pack? High pack. Uh, high pack. Okay. I mean, the other ones good too. NavG doesn't do. We don't. We haven't been doing backgrounds in NavG. No, we have yeah. not. We've been Which is fine. I'm yeah. okay with that screen not being busy. <laughs> like I can, I can meld those two <laughs> offline, like in my in my noggin. Yeah, I have a memory of a few years ago doing Nav and having to incorporate a lot of NavG, put all the targets in, all the backgrounds, oh, yeah. and so forth. Okay. Well, I think there's a new NavG coming down the pipeline soon. Oh wow! 3.0 lets you delete targets <laughs> yeah, that's amazing it's be good something i never really thought about is are most of the software we use for navigation here free or are they uh licensed Uh, so high pack is uh, definitely you have to pay for. Uh, although I think we get a deal because we're a nonprofit or something. Uh, the NavG is homebrew from out of Hui. Uh, I don't. I don't. I don't know if we actually pay for that or not. Yeah, I don't know. But it's not a. That's not something you're gonna find out there. The NavG right. NavS stuff. It's all. Uh, Internal. It, it's not open source in the sense that anybody could download it, compile right. it, and right. use. Yeah. yeah. But iPack is just a commercial product. Yep. Yeah, as far as I know, I don't think there's any open source kind of navigation softwares that work like iPack or WinFrog or Quincy or any of those. What about like navigation software like? OpenCPN or something like that. Does oh, that not yeah. do? I, 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 I don't know would. if its capabilities are more limited. Yeah, if you can put multiple feeds in mm -hmm. and multi get multiple That's the vehicles. only open source one I know about. Yeah. I don't, I don't know that. what its capabilities would be, but. This is really interesting terrain. Yeah, it is. It's cool. I don't even know how to describe it. Maybe columnar or very angular. Yeah. It's really sharp. Yeah. It's not columnar though. Like it doesn't have any of those like hexagonal. Like, hexagonal, yeah. yeah. It doesn't have any really like structured shapes. Everything's pretty freeform. 
hummocky. Yeah, wait, yeah. so l look at this. There's a there's definitely a direction to all the fractures up here. Mm. Like, look in Argus. Mm. Yep. You can see yeah. that it's definitely got a shape. It's really neat. This is some of my favorite flying is like weird fractured terrain. You like are always going up and around and got multiple different sort of views on the same chunks of rock. Oh yeah, this flies way better without auto heading on. It was great. It's almost like it goes where you want it to go. Yeah, it's almost like it does. Speaking of going where you want to go, uh, what's the current like? Any sense of it? Um, it hasn't been strong. There was a while there where I thought it was strong, but that was because my auto heading was on. That was the auto heading current. Oh, is that um, a stock crinoid right in yeah, front of us? I yeah, I think it is. Um, so I'm drifting right now, and it looks like oh wow, there's a little bit of current coming from the northeast, possibly, but I think it's pretty mellow. So we can look at that stocked cryonoid, actually. That will tell us. Let's do that. So I'm facing southeast, southwest right now. And that might be another, like a limpet in the background. Oh, yeah, the white. On the rock, yeah. Maybe an alive one. So stocked crinoid seems to think that the current is coming from the southwest, which was exactly the opposite of what I <laughs> expected. But yeah, it looks like the the goo in the water says it's coming from the southwest, okay. but very light. Yeah. Yeah, the animals are usually right. Yeah. They're brighter than robots anyways. Yeah. Although if we had an ADCP. Yeah, we've got like, you know, three fifths of an ADCP. <laughs> <laughs> Steve emailed Teledyne and asked if there was a Black Friday sale on ADCPs. <laughs> 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 they do not. <laughs> Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Tried, you know. Can't hurt to try. Yeah, that other one had a hole in the top for sure. Yeah, yeah. this one's looking a little healthier. Yeah, this one looks like the one we sampled on our one of our first few dives. How did you How did you sample it? Um, I think they they slurped it up. Okay. Yeah. I didn't see it. It was on the. I think we had just left watch or something. Okay. But yeah, yeah th I can imagine one, a little scrape and slurp yeah, being you can very effective. See the feeding front here, or it's kind of oh, been okay. Oh yeah, the stuff that hasn't been scraped off yet. Go wide. Is uh probably full of very nutritious organic material. But I, I it's also covered a lot of ground. Kind of, yeah, kind of like the sea stars. I always wonder how they choose to feed. You know what? Maybe they pick the areas of the rock that have the highest content, you know, nutritional content, they sense something, and that tends to correspond with the, I don't know, the, the fringes where the rock sticks up the most. Stuff down here is like so highly tuned to just the small, smallest differences in the environment. It's not, it's not like it's very dynamic down here. It's pretty stable. Let's do a quick check on our slurp to make sure that it's functioning. Oh, looks yeah. Like, do looks you want to like look at something? Oh, okay. That's all yep. good, yeah. I just checked it out. Seems awesome. like it's fine. So all we had to do was sort of like fuss over it for a little bit, and it's back in action. Changed nothing. So, Steve, the slurp wasn't clogged. It just needed attention. Oh, yeah. What yeah. was up? It looks like it's working as expected. So nothing nothing came out in the end, no surprises? No. Not really, no. This is moody. I 
have we seen any of our vehicles on USBL in a while? <laughs> 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 I, see, I see your little X bond there. Um, yeah, so I've been toggling back and forth between the sonar screen and especially with that x pawn it might take up to like i don't know it's been 200 seconds before it gets a hit sometimes yeah so that's mm -hmm. <laughs> oh i am <laughs> um yeah and we just got one way over there Well, here we are. We we are getting continuous hits on her. They're just kind of jagged. So. Yeah. Um, sponge rubble, sponge debris. Probably around here the, somewhere. <laughs> most of the biological evidence we've seen. It's interesting. We see these sponge stalks, but we don't see the like. I would have expected that to be like giant and bulbous. Yeah, or like just the last one colonized with something. You know, if it is dead. Oh, yeah. You know, like the crinoids. Well, I think we're, we're, we're just a bit deep. Things will start to pop out eventually. Too deep for a lot of critters? Yeah, generally the... Oh, there's a... The yeah, there shrimp. is. Oh, yeah, there. The matocar cyanid. Yeah. Um, so is that just because, like, not a lot of energy makes it this deep? That, like... Because it seems like otherwise it wouldn't be all that different. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's it's more of a density thing. Um, you know, you typically find things that are just lower density. They're still here, but you have to travel a lot further to see the same amount of things. Okay. Uh, but yeah, th that's the hypothesis. That is that it's food driven. I'm not even seeing like a lot of skeletons or anything. Just a few. I mean, currents might have something to do with it, too. Mm -hmm. it, you could, you know, at, at bottom line, it's, it's, it's all about energy. Um, so food is energy, right? Mm -hmm. But also, if you have more energy per unit time, like if you live in a faster current environment where you could you know, eke out an existence with you know, lower quality food but more of it, mm -hmm. uh, you might be able to persist in an area like this. Um, these Corellomorpharians here seem, seem to do pretty well. I've seen a couple of them so far. Corellomorpharians. Oh, coral type things. Yeah, the Corellomorpharians are very close relatives of the anemones, but they're a little different um, based on their internal uh, anatomy. Uh, but they zoom? typically have more knobby tentacles or, or knobs on the tentacles. And uh, those knobs are typically packed with higher densities of nematocysts, stinging cells. They can get quite large too, but also they can be incredibly tiny in shallow water environments. Um, Corellomorpharians in shallow waters, if you've ever had a close encounter with them, they are potent. Go, go wide? Potent stingers. Pretty good size sponge to your left. Oh, nice. Great. Oh, oh yeah. Big here we one. Go. It's like a vase. Yeah, it is a vase. It does. Do not need all this jam anymore. There's a little bit more apparent current here. Good sign. Yeah. Steve, question from a Go viewer. For zoom. Oh. Do we ever see bioluminescence down here, specifically in sponges or corals? Um or do we know of it? I guess but we don't see I it. Don't, but I I don't think um it's been well studied this deep. Um 
I'm going to try and pull up a paper and it's looked at bioluminescence uh, recently from the west coast of the U.S. and see what you their maximum depth tighter? was. Okay. Um, Neat. But I don't think it's been this deep. I think it's been a bit shallower. But y presumably, yes, they huh. could utilize that as some sort of signaling. I would say probably more common in the in the plankton, um, gelatinous zooplankton, for example. Okay, go wide. Oh yeah, some some work's been done as deep as 3900 3, meters. Yeah. It's oh, wow. quite deep. Oh wow. The baby oh. colophagus. That's a cutie. <laughs> Super cute. 3900 meters. Wow. How do you uh like look for or identify bioluminescence that you're, deep? You're going to have to use a a special camera for that. Yeah. yeah. It's not something that's standard. A uh, low light camera. Okay, go on. Something that that is, you know, probably able to pick up photons of light. Uh, definitely. I don't know much about low light cameras, but it sounds like a really great way of you know, looking at the world through a new set of eyes. Mm -hmm. How has he been doing speed-wise? Has he been able to hold the point two pretty mm -hmm. well? Is yeah. it like point three, point five? As I'm looking right now at it, it has varied between point one and point three six. Sounds exactly right for a point two move. Yeah, I feel the same way. Okay, cool. We've done a little bit of low light uh, work with Herc before. We put a it's quite a large housing, actually. Put it on the back of Herc, looking down. Huh. And then we tried to find the, um, can you help me out, Steve, the little tinafores that hang around the vents, those little round ones. Uh, they're tinafores. Um, anyway, we tried to find those and get them in the camera and then turn all the lights off and uh, wait for a bit, try and get some bioluminescent shots of it. Ah, very cool. Did they did it show up well? Like, is it a clear shot? or Not not live. You kind of had to look two, at three, it later. Zero? Roger. Ah, okay. Steve, is this your cucumber? Uh, can we half zoom? Yep, go for zoom. Yeah, this, this is one of the ones that's more gelatinous. Yeah. Um, we're looking for ones that are a little bit more solid. Roger. So Go no. The gelatinous ones, we've had really bad luck getting them to stay. Yeah, they don't do together. well, do they? Yeah. And once you break open the digestive tract, it's uh, game over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think they had some type of low light camera on when they filmed the gulper eel. Is that right? Uh, I don't know if that was a low light one. I would like the highlight one of the gulper yeah. eel. I don't, I don't think that was. Or maybe the blob. One of the, one of those big highlights. Remember that big or big blob thing? Yeah. Uh, the deep star, yeah. Yeah, that might have one of. The, I feel like one of those was with the low light camera. Maybe. Because yeah. I just remember really shallow depth of field and then asking someone about it, and they said it was a different. I don't think I was on for those ones. So I'm not sure, 100 percent. Could have been. Deep Staria was uh, NA114. It was in uh, Howland and Baker. 
Right. Yeah, that there was one deep staria that that I think was Helena Baker that I was on, and that was just taken with the Zeus. Hmm. Um, but there, I I think there was also another one. Was that with Sarah? Were you with Sarah Matzik on that? Yes, I think so. I think Trevor took that shot. Um, and it had like a little like parasite or something living in it. It's oftentimes they might have a jelly or something living with them. I'll get back to you all on which one that what some, some highlight. Some tinafores have parasitic anemone larvae live inside of them. Oh really? I think oh, it had wow. it was an isopod. Oh, was okay. Right? I think it was like That's a little a red one in yeah, it. And totally. it was, yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a cool highlight. Yeah. Like very eerie and ghostly yeah, looking. Totally. It didn't really have a lot of form itself. Sort of like it would seemed like a blob and then it seemed like a sheet yeah and then it seemed like a house for an isopod <laughs> it was really cool that was a really neat cruise we saw good stuff yes i i super excited to see the massive Madripoora colony from, I think it was Howland or Baker, one of those two. Um, probably one of the biggest single coral colonies slash reefs I've ever seen in my life. Really? Um, yeah, there was a great, great photo of it. It was absolutely massive. It was probably three meters across. Um, and uh, I, I, I used a photo of it for an upcoming publication on uh, deep water coral reefs of the Central Pacific. Oh, that's awesome. What kind of coral was it? It was a Madripoora oculata. Okay. It was a stony coral. Okay, we haven't seen much stony corals here, have we? No, you won't see them. Um, we barely got up into their depth range on the last cruise. Oh, okay. And I think we saw like two or three colonies total. Oh. Okay. Um, yeah, a, th uh, a thousand meters is really kind of the cutoff out here in the Central Pacific where you start to see them. Is it just, does it take a lot more energy to be a stony coral? Um, well, well, let me let me clarify uh, the colonial stony corals. We still see the solitary cup corals, right? Down yeah. th maybe even 3,000 meters uh, or more, but the, the colonial ones are much, much, much uh, less common, deeper than a thousand meters. Um, yes, it is energetically taxing to make a skeleton, um, especially one that has mass. Uh, and, you know, they have to keep producing that skeleton uh, and keep it covered with tissue, otherwise, it gets undermined by the corrosive seawater at these depths. So the seawater actively dissolves their skeletons? It, if it's not being protected by tissue. Okay. You know? Yeah. If, 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 that, if that biological tissue forms a barrier, they can usually um, you know, maintain their skeleton. Yeah. That's really wild. Yeah, it's a calcification is a very very cool mechanism um, that organisms use. Yeah, to neat. make skeletons. Yeah. Are we back at Helen Baker next year? Next year, I don't think next year. Um, okay. Uh, uh, maybe Jarvis, maybe? Yeah, I think Jarvis Kingston, maybe? Another bigger sponge to our left, I think I saw in Argus View. Oh, awesome. Thanks, Steve. Kingman, King, Kingman Palmyra, yes. That's the first plan. Uh, it's always subject, subject to change, but right. that's the plan. Um, after shakedown, and then... Uh, uh, I would love to go back to Jarvis. I think it was one of the most fascinating sites that I've ever explored um, oh awesome just a really amazing zonation patterns in 
corals on the ridge to the southeast and on the on the west side um, we found some incredible bamboo coral just like overhangs oh really um, deep deep overhangs that are just carpeted with bamboo corals oh wow we couldn't get good imagery of them because it was difficult to navigate around there it's overhangs and caves but every single square inch was covered with bamboo corals uh, and this was shallow less than 700 meters awesome go for zoom but even some of the seamounts around jarvis had really fascinating uh kind of proto deep water stony coral reefs um, that were producing really substantial amounts of rubble indicating that it's not just on the islands where you have reefs. Colophagus okay. again. Go in. Yeah, this seems to be a pattern here. Jarvis is very interesting. It's right on the equator. Um, and so you have equatorial currents impinging on the island. And that sets up a really interesting hydro, hydrodynamic, hydrographic um, conditions where you have very strong um, food supply uh, for corals, especially shallower waters, down to 500 meters or so. And it also results in localized upwelling, where on the up, up current side, uh, when the, where the current impinges on Jarvis, it results in um, upwelling of deep waters, which kind of fuel productivity. And on the down current side, kind of down wells, warmer waters. So it's possible on the western side. One thing I'm very curious about on the western side where you have upwelling, does it up also upwell larvae to a shallower distribution? Mm. Um, because the water comes that comes up is cooler uh, and might support those deeper species. Mm. But very isolated, very, very far. If I remember correctly, millions of birds on the island. Incredible birds, incredible the, birds. It's the most birds I've ever seen in one landscape. Really? Yeah. Is it a nesting ground or anything? Or where? I think Just it is, yeah. Many of those islands, um, especially around sunset, if you're out there and they start to take off, they all come up and it turns into like a cloud, like dark black cloud of birds blots oh out the God. sun. It's incredible. That's so cool. And also if you're down downwind of it, <laughs> it can be <laughs> stinky. A unique odor. <laughs> yeah. What do you think all these little white bits are on this rock here? The kind of the balls of yeah, material as sponges. The the smaller. No, the smaller right. ones. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Let's take a look. Let's see. What are you? Barnacles, maybe? Oh, could be, yeah. Uh... Go for Zoom. Yeah, barnacles. Yeah. Very cool. deep for barnacles. Okay, go wide. All the sites we were just talking about, of course, are within a protected area or protected areas of the Pacific Remote Islands Marine National Monument. So they have certain protections about uh, not only for the terrestrial resources like the birds, but also things that live in the ocean. had the opportunity to spend a month and, well, 34 days, I guess, uh, in Howland and Baker earlier this year. And uh, we did tons of exploration, um, sampling of deep water coral and sponge communities, as well as the rocks, similar to what we're doing here. Um, but it truly is fascinating. And my favorite dives are often the ones where we get to come up, kind of transition from the deep to the shallow. Uh, we got a chance to do that a couple times, look at some 
shallow water reefs from a deep water perspective. Oh, moving cool. Moving up from through the photic zone. Hmm. Steve, is your work primarily in the Pacific? It it uh, right now, yeah, it is. Um, there's some projects starting up um, that we have funded to work at deepwater coral uh, and benthic exploration in the Atlantic now. Okay. Um, have one project in the Atlantic that's ongoing. What are I mean, yeah, what are cold water corals and deepwater corals like in the Atlantic? Uh, some of the species are exactly the same. Um, believe okay. it or not, we find there's a lot of cosmopolitan species. Um, oh, right. I love that descriptor. Yeah. It's marvelous. Uh, like Aridogorgia, Magnus Borellus, you know, the very wide helical uh, chrysogorgid coral. Uh, some things like uh, some of the stony corals are, are world dis worldwide distributions, um, like Analopsemia and Madripora. Um, cup corals, a few cases, Desmophyllum, um, it's common in both basins. Uh, all the families are typically represented in both oceans, but there are usually different representatives, um, different representative species of those families. Um, most of the work I have going on in the Atlantic right now is in the Caribbean, so tropical seamount environments. Um, and the seamount environment is quite similar. I, I would say you probably have more substantial crusts associated with seamounts in the Pacific here, which might influence what kinds of species you have attached. Um, you definitely have a lot more uh, carbonate type of uh, substrate in the Caribbean. Um, some of the seamounts are, are more sedimentary in nature um, down to a couple thousand meters so you, know, you have like rock that's just been made up of you know, layers of sediment compressed over a year over years and years and then you've got carbonates and like lots of diversity rock types here it's kind of just all volcanics volcanic crust altered basalt basalt Uh, but for the most part, I, you know, one of the biggest differences that I've noticed is the the carbonate chemistry of the Atlantic is a little bit different than here in the North Pacific. Um, there you can find you know, colonial stony corals down 1,500 meters, maybe even 2,000 meters if you're looking in the right spots. Um, but here you really don't find them deeper than about 1,000 because of the, you know, it's, it's much harder, much more energetically taxing to calcify. Go for zoom. Just a wee little anemone. Uh, can we take a closer look? Uh, yeah. And, and whatever you can get me. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird, weirdly might, hard to light. I think that might be a cup coral. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can we slurp it up? Possibly. You want to stop the ship? Go wide. These are really neat. Um, so there are some cup corals actually that don't attach to the rock. Uh, they just sit on the sediment. Mm -hmm. And uh, this one, I'm, I can see some of the calcium carbonate through the tissue. And oftentimes you can't make a good identification on these without having a specimen in hand. Um, so these is this, these types of collections are incredibly valuable for understanding biodiversity, and the fact that it's so deep um, probably puts it into one of three genera, um, just based on what we know about their depth distribution: uh, Stephanosiathus or Deltosiathus, or some of the more deep species, deep genera we find for cup mm. corals. Can you give me five? 